Hey friends, welcome to this part, part 37. We are looking at real certification questions, all latest ones. If you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe. And there is also a join button below this video as well as in the description link. Join it to get gain access to so many different contents around cloud certifications, questions, solutions. Let us quickly look at this question. Now this question is asking what components are required to configure site to site VPN. Now let us look at option A, which is Internet Gateway. So this allows communication between VPC and Internet. Here we are not talking about Internet. We are talking about site to site. So this is wrong. Let us look at NAT Gateway. This is option B. If you want private instances, like instances in private subnet to connect to your VPC, then you use this. And in that case, external services will not be able to connect. Here we do not have a scenario which says private instances or private subnet needs to connect. The question doesn't say so. It is only it is only about site to site. Let us look at customer gateway. So customer gateway, this is a physical device or a software appliance. And we put it on premises. So this is uh, for now, let us park this. Let us look at D and E if I find a better option. Transit Gateway. See, this is required because you want to connect AWS VPCs, AWS accounts, and on-premises network to a single gateway. Then only they can talk to each other in a secured manner. You can manage it better. Once complexity increases, you get better visibility and control over virtual private clouds, clouds and edge connections. Okay. So D would be my one answer. And since we want to choose two answers, so we will look at E also virtual private gateway. See, once you are doing site to site, then you would need a virtual private gateway also. It will help direct connection between the VPCs. So this also looks correct. So these would be my two answers. So we, we will lock this. Let us look at the next one. This is the next question. See, you want security against the DDoS assaults. Whenever you look at DDoS, always think about Shield. Shield is meant for DDoS protection in AWS. Shield also has a feature called Shield Advanced. So this would be my answer, but let us go through other options. You have Firewall Manager, which helps you configure and manage firewall rules. It is just like a firewall on your laptops or your desktops. It does not help with DDoS protection. Let us look at WAF. It will not help you with DDoS. It will help you with common exploits, SQL injections, and so on. So WAF is wrong. Let us look at Guard Duty. Guard duty is just like your security guard. It is built with intelligent threat detection. It will understand the bad players or bad work or bad requests that has been put. It will continuously monitor your resources databases for any potential threats. If they find a threat, it will immediately expose the threats. It has machine learning, behavioral modeling fed in. So it is very intelligent, but it will not help you with DDoS. What is DDoS? It is distributed denial of service. So it will automatically deny if you think it is a coming from a bad player. So if you see shield has two versions shield standard shield advanced. So what shield does is it provides always on detection and automatic inline mitigations that minimize application downtime and latency without contacting AWS support. So whenever uh, it like it is constantly monitoring your applications, its focus is to try to minimize your downtime. The beauty is it gives you real time visibility into attacks and it is tightly integrated with WAF, that is a firewall and other firewalls. Okay. So Shield Advance gives you 24 by 7 access to Shield Response SRT team. So that way, you know, that team would automatically, you know, provide you support 24 by 7. If you go for Shield Advance, obviously Shield Advance is costly compared to Shield Standard. So that is all about DDoS protection, Shield. Remember this thumb rule, the moment you see DDoS, you should think about shield shield has two versions standard and advanced now let us look at the next question see you have s3 bucket s3 means it is an object store which is in aws it has unlimited uh, storage and it is an object storage you can store files and any sort of unstructured data so on video files audio files data files now the question is asking which functionality allows customers to encrypt the data stored on S3 during the storage process. See, when, whenever we are talking about encrypt, there are two stuff. See, immediately common sense, server-side encryption, client-side encryption. Immediately what you do is, 
straight away IAM policies is wrong because IAM policies will not help you with encryption. It is used to provide users access to a resource or group of resources. IAM has nothing to do with encryption. Second is C, guard duty. This is automatically wrong. Why? Like we saw in the previous question, it is a security guard. It has intelligent threat detection. It will detect the bad players. It is a security solution, not an encryption solution. I repeat, it is a security solution, not an encryption solution. Now we have to choose between server side and client side. Now S3, if you see this documentation, it supports server side encryption. Okay, so you can pause this video, read this documentation carefully. And what is client side encryption? That means you are encrypting the data, encrypting the file before you send to S3. And what is server side? That means server side is you are not encrypting, you are sending the file while the data is getting stored in S3, it gets automatically encrypted. What is the question asking? It is saying customers will, uh, will send the file, it will automatically encrypt during the storage process. If you have to encrypt during the storage process, that is server side and not client side. So this is wrong because customer has not encrypted on their side and just transferring. They are saying when they are transferring, when the storage is happening, during the storage, the encryption should occur. That is why server side encryption is correct in this case. I hope you understood the concept. Folks, if you have not yet subscribed, please hit subscribe. It will help you clear cloud certification exams, AWS, Google Cloud, Azure and Snowflake. This brings us to the end of part 37. Stay tuned. We will post many more such parts. By the way, if you have not become a member yet, click the join button below this video or the link, click the link in the description to become a cloud kernel or a cloud ninja member. See you in the next part. Happy learning.